What's up everybody, Prepared Guy here once again and today we're taking a look at the Ace Beam Rider RX. Upon unboxing you'll find the instructions, a C-type charging cable, a lanyard, some extra O-rings, and the light itself along with a 37 volt 920 milliamp 14500 rechargeable lithium ion battery. The model I picked out is made of aluminum alloy, it's also IP68 waterproof up to 2 meters, has an impact rating of 1 meter, and weighs just under 80 grams or just under 3 ounces with the battery on board. I'll leave the tech specs from the manual on the screen now just in case I leave out any details, so pause the video here to see those details. During my runtime test using the included 14500 rechargeable battery in the 650 lumen high mode, the Rider RX ran for a couple minutes before stepping down to 450 lumens for an additional couple minutes and then to 330 lumens for the remainder of the test for a total runtime of 45 minutes, which was kind of off by about 10 minutes, uh, give or take, from the runtimes suggested in the manual. In my second runtime test using an Energizer Max standard alkaline battery, I ran the Rider RX. RX on the 200 lumen mode, which gave off 200 lumens for about 20 minutes before tapering off to about half a lumen uh, for the remainder of the test for a total runtime of about 25 minutes of usable light and then an additional 17 hours of what I would consider about half a lumen um, in moonlight mode light which isn't good or bad, it just is what it is, it just didn't get off very much light for a long period of time, it just, it just didn't. During my thermal test in the 650 lumen high mode, the Rider RX reached a max thermal output of 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius after about 15 minutes of use. I only tested the thermal output using the 14500 battery because the light can only reach 650 lumens, aka its highest output using the included battery. So that's when it's going to get its hottest. During my recharge test using my Anchor PowerPort 3, the Rider RX included battery took 3 hours and 34 minutes to fully recharge from completely depleted, which was forever in comparison to the 45 minute runtime that it actually provided. But then again, how many 14500 flashlights can achieve 650 lumens at all? Uh, no, I'm serious, I'm asking. You guys can leave a comment down in the comment section below. I really want to know what other flashlights are similar to this that put out 650 lumens. Now let's take a quick tour of the modes and general operation of the Ace Beam Rider RX. All right, guys, now we're gonna go over the modes and general operation of the Rider RX. So I have two different versions. Well, they're the same exact version, just different style colors and stuff. So we've got the rainbow and we got the titanium here for the Rider RX, pretty nice looking light overall. Now let's take a little tour of the light. You got the shiny outside of this one, and then you got um, your clip here for the pocket. Now look at the pocket clip. It's really well designed. It's a nice sturdy pocket clip that's in there. Got a couple hex screws there, and uh, yeah, it's just not going anywhere. Very nice tight, double-sided, so that you can stick this on a hat if you're working on a project, or you could slide it in your pocket as well. Now. Obviously, there's a very interesting feature here. It's the fidget feature, which I just, I personally don't think it's necessary at all with this flashlight. I think it's pretty cool the way it is. I don't, I just feel like it's extra steps, but it does have this little fidget option. So what, how this works is there's little ball bearings. There's three sets, one, two, and then three. And how that works is you pull the clip off to the side and you'll notice that the ball bearings switch places. So there's over here and now it's there. And then you push down and that will expose the uh, head of the flashlight and you can turn the lens and the battery is inside the battery pops out like so you can change the battery that way also you screw this back in and you can press the button in there you can reach in there with your finger and um, you can use it and stand it as so without having to worry about hitting the button now if you try to stand it okay without the button it'll probably still stand but you're going to bump the button and if you try to push the button to turn it on or off when it's not locked into place you're going to accidentally push it through so that's what would happen and you can still reach in there and press the button so interesting design they decided to call this like a fidget feature I, like i said i don't really care about it one way or the other um, the one thing that i do mention also earlier was that um, if you do get dirt or water in this um, 
it's just gonna end up screwing up the mechanism. So it's best to, if you're gonna buy this, uh, make sure that you use some gun oil or some DW40 um, around the ball bearings and um, then you dry it off from there. Um, it will help it slide easier and it will also um, protect those ball bearings uh, from rust as well, especially if you get this wet. Um, and you're gonna end up having to use a blow gun here, like one of these, just to kind of get the excess dirt out of there after you clean off your, um, your flashlight. So just some things I'd suggest doing and some things to look out for if you're gonna purchase this light. Personally, like I said before, I'm gonna use this as like a EDC every once in a while when I dress up. So here's some more features here. The outputs, all right? So here's how this works. This is the seven lumen mode. Then you're gonna cycle over to the 70 and then to the 280 and then to the 650. And if you wanna reach that uh, SOS mode, you have to cycle through all the things twice. And then on the end of the second one, you click it in and there's this secret SOS mode. Now, the thing I don't like about this is when you turn the SOS out mode off, it stays in the memory once in a while. So if you do it too soon, you have to cycle through and then it will turn on but you can't cycle right out of it sometimes. Sometimes it will get stuck and it's very finicky. Um, but if you need to use the SOS mode, it's there at the end of the second cycle. So basically one, oops, see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then there it is. Okay, so if you wanna turn it off, it'll go back to whatever the last mode you had it in. It does have the memory. So if I cycle all the way over, let's go to the uh, 70 lumen mode here. I clicked it in and now I wait a second and then it's gonna go right back to the 70 and I can cycle through the 650, turn it off, one, two, and it's still gonna be there. So you have to give it some time to set after you turn it off. Otherwise, it's just gonna cycle like so to the other modes. So that's basically the general operation of it. It's very similar size, if not the exact same size as the Olight R5, Oh, I, R, whatever, what is this thing? <laughs> the I5R EOS. And um, it's basically the exact same light, except for it's extra steps with this uh, funky little gimmicky thing that they got going on there. Um, I do actually like the clip on this way better than the I5R. And I also like the fact that this throws a lot better than the I5R. Um, we'll take it outside right now. And you guys can check out what these look like side by side. The Ryder RX has a max beam distance of 96 meters or 315 feet in the 650 lumen high mode and a max candela of 2304 CD. It also utilizes a Nachia 219F 5000K 90CRI LED, which is a damn good LED. This is the Ryder RX in the low 7 lumen mode with a runtime of 53 hours. We're going to step it up again to the 70 lumen mode with a runtime of three hours and eight minutes. We're gonna step it up again to the 280 lumen mode with a runtime of one hour. And then we're gonna step it up again with the 650 lumen high mode with a runtime of two minutes and then it will step down to several other uh, lumen outputs. We are 20 feet away from the railings in front of us. Now I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison with the Olight i5R. This is the Olight i5R and we are in the 15 lumen mode with a runtime of 37 hours. And then we're gonna step it up to the 350 lumen mode with a runtime of 10 minutes. And then it will step down to 150 lumens after that 10 minutes for an additional 170 minutes. Now I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. On the right-hand side, we have the Ryder RX. As you can see, that goes pretty far up into the tree line over there. Now on the left, I'm gonna put the i5R in the 350 lumen mode. And now the RX is in the 650 lumen turbo mode or high mode. You can see the Rider RX is obviously way better at throwing out there than the i5R. The i5R does do a good job. Rider RX does a much better job. That tree right there is about 50 feet away. The little marker out there that fell over is about 50 feet away, roughly. The tree's a little bit closer. It's probably about like 40 feet away from where I'm at. Then the tree line out there is 80 feet. 
roughly. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty nice and bright. Now I'm going to put the i5R on the left. Now this is 350 lumens. The i5R is 350 lumens. The Rider RX is going to be 650 lumens. I want to slowly tilt it out there to that tree line. As you can see, it's pretty similar, but you can obviously see that the Rider RX does punch through where the i5 R does not really punch as much. Now see, this is just the i5R. And it does reach out there, but not in the same capacity as the Rider RX. My pros and cons are as follows. First, the pros. It's pretty cool to look at. It has a really powerful output when you use that 14500 battery, and it's a nice conversation piece, and it's a neat fidget-friendly flashlight. Now for the cons. I liked the bolt action fidget thing that it does, but to be honest with you guys, if you get this wet or dirty, the water or dirt is going to be very hard to clean out or dry off, which could lead to some issues with the ball bearings inside of the mechanism over time. So I wouldn't buy this if you're planning on using it in dirty environments. My second con is it lacks in what I consider to be one of the most important areas for a flashlight, and that would be runtime. If you haven't watched my old Olight i5R video, you can check it out in the link down below in the description. The i5R uses a customized 14500 battery, but it also utilizes standard uh, alkaline batteries, and the run times overall are much better with the i5R than with the Rider RX when using standard alkaline batteries. In fact, I would go as far to say that the Rider RX using the standard alkaline battery was almost shameful. Um, the only saving grace with the Rider RX was the 600 50 lumen high mode and of course the 315 foot beam distance throw take those two things away and you're left with a pretty standard double a flashlight all personal cons aside it's actually a pretty cool light so don't be put off by my personal opinion because i don't love or hate this light it just is what it is um, if you want to buy this light based on how cool it looks alone you'll definitely enjoy it and it does perform well it's just not to my liking for the run times it retails for about $50 on the Ace Beam website with the warranty, uh, but the warranty is almost non-existent. And I always say stay away from a company that doesn't give their customers at least a one-year repair or replacement warranty from mechanical failures. Um, Ace Beam doesn't seem to tell us that they're willing to do that uh, for their customers at all on the warranty section of their website. I will mention that the Olight i5R is about $15 cheaper and it comes with a five-year standard standard warranty that does cover total replacement due to mechanical failures, so it's really up to you depending on your budget and your needs. Personally, I picked up the Rider RX as a novelty, and I probably won't be using it as my primary EDC flashlight anytime soon, but for those more fancy dress-up occasions, I will definitely be taking it along um, with me because it is stylish and it's fun to use and it will get the job done in a pinch. I'll leave a link down in the description below so that you can pick up this pretty neat little toy. Also, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video has been helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Prepared Guy, and in until next time, guys, stay prepared.